I have the honor today to speak to you guys. First, I want to honor the pastor, the head pastor in this house, Pastor Juan, and his wife, Pastor Ruth. Amen. We thank God for them. I want to honor all the pastors in the house, uh, all the media team, the sound team, the people that you can't see that are able to make this happen. Uh, I want to honor them as well. I want to honor you guys that are here today. Um, Pastor, you guys heard on on the announcements uh, that tomorrow at at 7 p.m., Pastor is going to be releasing some some very vital, important information. And if you guys consider this your church, I would highly recommend that you show up, uh, that you bring your pen and your paper and take some notes, because you guys know Pastor is full of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Amen. Uh, Pastor currently is in South Carolina in a marriage conference. Uh, He did a leadership training with other churches, and uh, now he's preaching this morning, and then as soon as he's done, he's heading home. Amen. Pastor's going to get here early, just in time for a nap, to turn around and come do it all over again. Uh, For those of you who don't know me, my name is uh, Vinny DeLeon. I have been serving with Get Wrapped for over Oh, it's probably been about 10 years now, 8 to 10 years, something around those lines. Um, The Lord has blessed me tremendously to be able to uh, do what he has called me to do. Amen. Uh, Last week, Pastor spoke about what it is to the word amen and how it is to come into an agreement with and to believe it. Amen. To believe what the word says. The beautiful thing about the word of God is that it's shallow enough to drink from, but deep enough to drown in. Amen? The, the word is the only tool that we have that is going to help us. The word of God is the only thing that is designed to prosper us. The word of God is not a lie. It doesn't contradict itself. The reason why we don't believe some of these things is because we have become accustomed to believing what people say rather than what God says. God has trusted me today to talk about uh, the power of the mind. Yeah. Pastor asked me, he said, Vinny, if you could speak about something, what would it be? And I said, well, Pastor, a lot has happened in my life since the last time that you guys have seen me to today. Yeah. Uh, the Lord has, has gifted us with uh, businesses. He's gifted us with finances. He's gifted us with revelation. And, and I wanted to share a little bit. This isn't about me, but I want you to understand that this is about what God is doing in me so you can use this as an example to what you were designed to be. Amen? Um, it, it's, it's, I'm going to start with this story. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm a, I'm a barber, and we own a barber shop. And this gentleman walks in, and, and he's Indian, and he comes from uh, India, and, and we started to talk, him and I, and he says that he Googled um, the best barbershops around town, and we were in the top three. He didn't go to number one. He said he just didn't like it, but he also said that he didn't like mine either, just from the, <laughs> from the online presence. I said, well, shame on you. But anyway, uh, <laughs> so, so uh, he went to the second shop, and he, he used the term butchered. They butchered me. Uh, then he came to my shop. And when he came to my shop, he says um, he, he got a service that, that was worth him coming back. And he came back, and then we just worked on his beard. Uh, when we worked just on his beard, he came back the third time. So the third time is when he started to open up, and he says that he's from India, and he um, was able to get to a point to where he was an, an engineer, has two master's degrees. He's a professor at the uh, uh, um, A&M in College Station. And um, he says that he was the creator of the city of Dubai. He engineered all of the city, created it, built it out, created their softwares, created their programs. He's a very, very knowledgeable gentleman. And then uh, he, he started to build other cities around Dubai as well. And he sat there and he says, "Um, I want to ask you a question. I said, what's that? He says, who taught you business? And I said, well, nobody. And he says, how did you start your business? How much capital did you have? And I said, none. He said, said, "Uh, how much 
uh, savings did you have? And I said, none. He says, uh, what was your credit score to get started? I said, it was none. <laughs> I had nothing. I said I was negative $200. I used to be homeless, and, and the Lord has gifted us and brought us to, to the point to where we're at now. And he says, I came back because not only were you professional, but you have the gift to service people. Yeah. And I said, well, thank you. I appreciate it. And I said, well, tell me a little bit about yourself. And, and uh, before that, I asked him, I said, has anyone ever asked you or told you that you can be anything that you want to be? Has anyone ever asked you that you can do whatever it is that you want to do? And he says, it's funny you say that because me and my family, his father and his mother and his siblings, he said, we lived on the streets of India for three years. And in that process, he said his father pounded education in his head, which led him to be the man that he is today. He moved to the States, and when he moved to the States, his wife died. When his wife died, he says he was lost. Just follow me here. I'm going somewhere with this. He said he was lost. He didn't know what to do. He didn't know how to handle things. He said the thing that he felt he was created for all of a sudden was gone. And he says in our culture, what we do is whenever we are faced with challenges or if your spouse leaves, he says the thing that we do is we shave our hair, our beard, our head. He says it's our culture to do that, and it's a representation to start over again. It's a sign to show that they are in new beginnings. I said, well, all you had to do was accept Christ for that. But anyway, I mean, you didn't have to shave your head. Uh, I'm thinking that to myself. And, and, and I'm listening to him. And he says, so when that happens, he says, that's why a barber is so important to him. Because they share part of his journey in life. And I never thought about it that way. My point is, is that if you're not confident in a thing that God has called you to be or to do what God has called you to do, then you will lose the concept of who you are. And there has been times in my life that has led me to this point to where I'm at today, where I was homeless. I was disobedient. I ran from God. Uh, a lot of you know my story. Uh, for those of you who don't, there's a little bit of it. Um, and so I started to think, I said, you know, if I fell victim to conforming to the ways of the world, then I will never be capable of transforming from the ways of the world. And, and, and the, I started to really dissect this message and started to think about it. And the Lord led me to, to three points that that I feel believers struggle with in their mind. If you have a pen and paper, I highly recommend that you take notes. I think, and my goal is, is to become very transparent with you guys, but also through scriptures and prayer, I want to uh, be able to build you up and encourage you to do what God has called you to do. Three areas of your life that the mind can affect is your spiritual life, your relationships, and your finances. And as believers, we have become accustomed to uh, relying on other people to do the work that you were called to do to gain the fullness of these three areas in your life. I'm going to read a scripture from Numbers 14, 1 through 4. And it says, That night, all the members of the community raised their voices and wept aloud. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron and the whole assembly said to them, if only we had died in Egypt, an exclamation point. That means they're screaming this at them. Or in the wilderness, another exclamation point. Why is the Lord bringing us to this land to let us fall by the sword? How many times have we asked God, why are you doing this? Our wives and children will be taking us plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they all said to each other, we should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. All week I was asking people if they have been told that you can do what you put your mind to or you can be anything you put your mind to. And to my surprise, a lot of them had said no. And it's, it's, it boggled me because I also was not told that you can be anything you want to be or do anything you want to do. Because anything that you want to do or be is starting your mind. 
And I believe that if we're not told these things, then what tends to happen is we listen to people who were bound by racisms and trends and patterns and traditions and poverty and greed and victimization. And it has caused us to fall into these patterns that has gone from generation to generation to generation. And that's why we're struggling in a world today where we're afraid to think for ourselves and be a light in a dark world because it doesn't match what everyone else is saying or doing. And for me, I started to think about the spiritual life, which is my first point. Your life as of now is a manifestation of your thoughts. Write that down. Your life as of now is a manifestation of your thoughts. What you believe is what you will live. It's time to take ownership of our life and take what is rightfully yours and what you have been destined to do and live. Romans 12, 2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind. Then you will be able to test and approve God's will is his good, pleasing, and perfect will. When I gave my life to Christ, I gave my life to Christ because I reached a point where I was fed up with myself. When I was homeless in my truck and I seen my daughter and she said, Dad, let's go home. And I had nowhere to take her. I finally came to the realization, what is it that you have become? What did you do? How did you get to this point? And as I started to really think more and more, I started to realize I was living a life that I felt was good for me, but not the life that God had destined for me to be. And a lot of us are struggling in life because it's hard for us to be what God has called us to be. And if you can't get it right here, guess what? You won't even accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. God will not ever come in and change your mind to accept him. You have to have the heart and the mindset to say, Lord, I accept you into my life. And then his perfect will can be done in your life. And as I started to to think about myself, I said, nothing really happened in my life until I chose to take ownership and start to change my mind. Amen? How many of you can attest to that? How many of your life has started to change when you said, Lord, take over my mind, take over my heart, take over my will, not my will, but your will be done. Lord, I trust you. I don't believe that I'm a victim. I don't believe that I'm poor. I don't believe that I'm destined to be sick. I don't believe that I'm destined to be beneath. I believe that I'm destined to be above. I'm not going to be a victim. I'm going to be a leader. I'm not going to be a follower. I'm going to be the things that you call me to be. I stand in glory. I have rights to your kingdom. I am your son. I'm not going to play God. I'm going to choose to be the one that you called me to be. And at some point, I started to tell myself the things that was taught to me. But the reason why I couldn't accept it is because I heard it like many of us hear the gospel. But we don't apply it to our lives and we feel like we are living a life that is not meant for us because it's not the way that we want it. Amen. Amen. And so what I started to do when I accepted Christ is I started to change the people that I was around. I started to make a commitment to say, Vinny, whether you like this or not, this is what you need. I started to convince myself that the things that I had done, I seen the outcome of that life. What do I got to lose on this life? I had nothing to lose, everything to gain. But we don't want to gain what's ours because it makes us uncomfortable. It challenges our mind. And as I started to take ownership of my mind, I started to see that God started to move in my life. God started to open up doors that were destined for me. My mother would pray. My dad would pray for us. And they would constantly say, God, find him. You go after him. You do what you need to do. Go and get my son. You didn't call him to be homeless. You didn't call him to be an alcoholic. You didn't call him to have a needle with his arm. You didn't call him to be in the streets. You called him to be above. You called him to be the guy that you called him to be. You called him to be the man of God. And I thank God for a fervent prayer of the righteous because it availed as much. And I started to live the life that God had chose me to be. Was it easy? No. Was it hard? Yes. Because I went from years of accustoming my mindset to be one way. And then I had to start to adapt the ways of God. And in that process, I didn't know who was real. 
I didn't know how to de determine the real from the fake. So what I chose to do is I said, well, the heck with everybody. His word is real. The Bible says, God, you're the same yesterday, today, and forever, and you change not. From the Old Testament to the New Testament, that's the God that I choose to serve. I don't get caught up with the old and the new and the new covenant and the old covenant. I get caught up in the blood of Jesus. If it's the same then, it's the same now. So I started to understand and started to dissect the word for myself. And in that process, then people started to attract and started to come to me. I started to attract the people that my mind started to believe that I was. You understand how that works? So now I'm positioning myself to be the man that I want to be, that God has called me to be. And now things are changing in my life. And in the process, I lost friends, but I started to gain new friends. I lost money, but now, well, I still was lost with money. I didn't understand money at that point, if we're going to be honest. <laughs> and that's the truth. I didn't, I didn't really realize what money was because the money that I had, I was using it to try to find happiness rather than getting God and finding happiness, and then money will come to me. The reason why, I'm getting ahead of myself, but listen, I, I was determined to break the old ways of living that I was in, Amen. I was very determined to do that, and I said, I refuse to allow people to dictate my life any longer. And my biggest growth came is whenever I started to, I stopped allowing people to think for me. Amen? I'm telling you, stop allowing people to think for you. When you stop allowing people to think for you, then you start to take ownership. And like Paul said, you start to leave the childish things alone and slowly start to walk into the mature things that God has for you. And, and as I started to do that, say, repeat after me. I want you to say transform, transform. not conform. Not conform. When I started to transform... I started to leave the things that I was conforming that I had allowed me to conform to. I started to cut those things off and I started to live a transformed life. Amen. Because I had the mind of God and I spent eight years serving uh, nonstop here in Get Rap Church. Nonstop. Nonstop. When I tell you nonstop, nonstop. Nonstop. Non-stop. I chose to serve because my heart was seeking change. I chose to surround myself with people because I needed change. I was tired of living a lifestyle. I was the one out there setting up the... <laughs> Me and a number of us, we were, were very few of us, by the way, but we were the ones setting up for Love Fest. We were the ones that set up on a picnic table for Love Fest. Pastor and I would meet every Monday. We were best friends, and we met in a barbershop. And all I chose to do, we would talk vision. And everything that we have spoken to and to each other over our lives has now manifested itself. But because I had the mindset to serve, now I had the mindset to start to tread waters that I never used to. I'll give you another story. One day I was asked to uh, do an interview for black and brown uh, business owners, black and brown business owners. And I said, yeah, I'll do the interview. So whenever I went to go to the interview, I was sharing this with Pastor Todd. I said, um, this gentleman asked me, he says, what were some of the challenges that you have faced of becoming a business owner? And I said, challenges that I have, actually, he said, what were the challenges you have faced of being a man of color and starting your business? And I said, a man of color started my business. And I said, well, really, to be honest with you, my skin color had nothing to do with my challenges starting a business. The biggest challenge that I had was getting out of my old mindset and getting out of a poverty generation and a poverty mindset and starting to come into something that God has called me to be. My color had nothing to do with my mind. And a lot of us have become so victimized by our surroundings that we tend to blame the surroundings rather than taking ownership and getting out of that environment and saying, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Say with me, not conform, but transform. And so I told him in the interview, I said, that's not me. That's not my mind. My mind, what I chose to do was go around a millionaire black man, a millionaire white man, a millionaire Mexican. I went around a millionaire Asian and I said, what is it that you can teach me? And you know, the common denominator in all of these millionaires was they had the same mindset. Amen. 
And so as I started to learn that, I said, you know what? This relationship for this magazine is not good for me. Because if I give you what it is that you want, then you can come and taint what God has already blessed me with. And because of that, I refuse to allow people in the wrong relationships to come into my life. It doesn't mean I'm better than you. It doesn't mean I don't love you. It just means that my mindset is saying this relationship is not healthy for me. So excuse me while you stay in poverty, but I'm choosing to live in victory. Amen. And a lot of the reasons why, which brings me to my second point, relationships, okay, relationships, the wrong mindset can affect your relationship. Amen. A lot of us don't have what we want in life because we keep the wrong people around us. Amen. The point that I want to bring out is that the Israelites were living a life in Numbers 1 and 4, 1 through 4. The Israelites were now living a life of freedom. They had asked God to take them out of Egypt, and now they're in, we're in Numbers, and they're living a life of freedom. But what happens is, is that these people got to a point to where they were praying for deliverance. God speaks to the deliverer, Moses. Moses comes and leads them out, but because at some point they realized we got out of Egypt, we're in freedom, but because freedom doesn't look like what I think it should look like. Now we're going to complain about the freedom that we prayed and God gave us. And so now what happens is I started to really think about the scripture and I said, you know what? What happened is their body moved faster than their mind did. And what happens is a lot of us, we're moving forward more than what our mind has caught up to. Because we choose to keep the surrounding of people. We choose to have bad relationships. You wonder why you're single? Well, actually, let me say this. Let me say this before I go there. Single, stop complaining that you're single. Work on your mind. Couples, stop complaining what your couple's not doing, what your, your spouse is not doing, what they could be doing right. Maybe you need to change your mindset because ultimately... <laughs> Ultimately, your relationship is a factor of your thinking. Your spouse and your partner, <laughs> you, can't, you can't get mad at them because that's the way that you think of yourself. Or, or, <laughs> Pika. The mindset was limited to the, to the realization that they, they were in. Sometimes you have to step out of the unfamiliar. You have to step out of your familiar to the unfamiliar. Amen? Because we have become so familiar with each other, that's why a lot of people, especially believers, say that they can't receive from pastors anymore. You have become so familiar with people and unfamiliar with God. So when God speaks to you, if it, doesn't, if it doesn't make you feel comfortable, if it doesn't fluff you up the way you need to, if they don't do the things that you think they should be doing, then you're quick to say, no, that's not meant for me. God has called me somewhere else. Or, I'm going to go there, now that I'm on that topic, what tends to happen is, the worship team has to be the one to give you the approval if God is in the building or not. And so what happens is we worship, worship. We, we, come on now. We worship, worship and not God. And so now you have a mindset to think that if worship is not the worship that I need to make me feel comfortable in what it is that I'm doing, basically your sin, then God is not showing up. So what do we do? Let's go start a worship ministry and everybody can worship him the way that we feel is comfortable for us. Oh, but it's not a church. No, we can't have churches. Why? Because churches require structure. And a lot of us don't want structure in our lives. We want to feel good. We want feelings. We want emotions. Because we have a mindset to please us, not a mind to please God. And our relationships have become very limited. Our body is moving faster than our mind. Amen? That's why we struggle to still find the right spouse. 
That's why you struggle to be in the right church. That's why you struggle to still have money. <laughs> this is good stuff, man. You don't have to like me. Like the word. It's the word of God. So now what happens is we have a heart that becomes a couch. And on a couch, a lot of people sit on that thing. And we tend to put God who wants a throne and put him on a couch. And so you want to make God comfortable with all of the rest of the things that you serve. And God says, if you don't want me, I refuse to leave my throne. And we have a couch as a heart rather than a throne. And people want to walk in and just make it comfortable for everybody else rather than having a throne for God. Yeah, I'm saying the things I'm saying. I'm saying that with boldness because I'm not afraid of the devil. Some, if we don't call this thing out, man, a lot of us are going to be victim to our own mindset in Jesus' name. And at some point, somebody has to take ownership and confront the things that are going on. Amen? And so what tends to happen is now we lower our standards and we lower our mindset. And we start to settle on the things that you're not supposed to be settling in. That's why our money is jacked up. Amen? Which is my third point. Your finances, your money is a tool, not your God. Amen? And now I'm going to go in on this one. Money is gauged by works, what you put in. God is gauged by faith, what you can't see. So a lot of us go for the tangible, not faith. And so you wonder why God can't move on your behalf is because you don't see the value in yourself. You see value in money. That's why God can't trust you with money. That's why you're still broke. That's why you're still poor. God's people are not designed to be that way, amen? I preached a sermon some time ago, and I said, what is the richest place in the world? And a lot of people would say Dubai or Hawaii and all these mountains full of jewelries, but really the most wealthiest place in the world is the cemetery. It's the cemetery because there's a lot of untapped potential that people were afraid to release in their life. I wonder how many books are in the cemetery, how many businesses never manifested itself because we never got our spiritual life and our relationships and our mind right. Amen? Amen? And a lot of us, we don't have what we have in life because we keep the wrong relationships. We have the wrong mindset. We have the wrong, the wrong belief of things. And so now you wonder why God's not moving in your finances. Well, because God says, if I can't trust you with the right mind, I can't trust you with my money. When, when, when I got my barbershop, my mindset was not about the business. My mindset was how much money I wouldn't have. And because of that, God says, well, I can't give you your business yet because you don't trust me with your money. And so I became so focused on becoming the provider rather than allowing God to provide. And so uh, I told myself and I made an inner vow to myself that I will never, my children will never have to grow up the way that I grew up. The problem with inner vows is, is that it becomes demonic because it becomes your will than what it does God's will. And so God can't deliver you from it because you won't allow him to deliver it from you. Amen. So when I finally quit my job, I realized I created an inner vow that was starting to become demonic and I never could prosper in my business. When I finally put my whole trust into God and God started to really move on my behalf, I started to learn that I quit being lazy. Amen. A lot of us, our thoughts and our minds have become lazy. And a lot of us in church are lazy Christians. You're lazy. That's why you worship worship, because you refuse to get in his word. Worship creates. Worship brings down heaven. But his revelation is well, who he is and reveals to you what he wants to do. So because you were lazy and you don't want to read your Bible, it's easier for you to come to church and feel good rather than get struck in the mouth or get hit in the mouth and say, God, I trust you, not your ways, but 
my or not my ways, but your ways be done and your will be done. And so now we have become lazy Christians. And what we tend to do is worship low hanging fruits. Low hanging fruit is a sign that you're lazy because it's right in front of you. God didn't call us to do what's in front of us. He called us to move and have forward progress. Amen. So we're afraid to reach to the higher fruit because it requires more effort than what you want to give. You just want what's in front of you. That's why you live a life of compromise. Because you're lazy. Your mind is lazy. I started to get the biggest success in my life whenever I stopped letting others do things for me. And I took on the abilities to read and, and understand who I am and what I am, and I refuse to be lazy. That's why even in the morning we start, we open the shop at 9 o'clock, but I'm in that shop by 7.30 because it's my way of showing the Lord, Lord, I'm not lazy. You can trust me with more. I'll give you more. I'll give you more time. I'll give it to you in the way that you trust me. And in return, we're going to impact the community and we're going to give back to the community and we're going to love the way that you called me to love because I'm no longer a victim, but yet I walk in victory. <laughs> Amen? Amen? And I, I'm, I'm saying all of that because when you start to understand the mindset of God, then you'll start to live a life of peace. Amen. My mind has been challenged the most it has ever been. When January 18th, I lost my mother. This is the first time that I've spoke since I've lost my mother. And I'm very passionate more than what I've ever been before, because if I didn't have the mind of Christ, I would be losing. Amen. I would be losing big time. And I have a picture, and I want to put it up there. And I want to show you something. Every day, my mother used to uh, post all the time. And my mom, she posted this, and somebody made me a book with all of my mom's posts on it. And it said, make up your mind to keep the press and not quit. Refuse to be bullied by your fears or stopped by your insecurities. Rise up in the knowledge that God made a masterpiece when he made you. Embrace the grace to abound in every good work in spite of the devil's attacks. Victory belongs to you because you belong to God. Walk with faith today. He's got you. Have a blessed week. Remember, victory belongs to you. Jesus gave us power over the devil. Today and always, mercy shall follow you. Grace will empower you. Favor will distinguish you. Peace will keep you and help you locate God's divine grace. My mother had a life, and she chose to pray for us all the time. And right before she passed, the Lord told her to ask for forgiveness to my father. She was on her way to the hospital that day, and she told my dad, she said, this is going to be the last time you're ever going to see me again. She said, I want to repent, and I want to ask for your forgiveness. Thank you for being a husband. Thank you for being a father. Thank you for being a great-grandfather. She says, you were everything that God had trusted me with, and I hope in return I was that to you. And she had a mind to make it to heaven. Mom had a mind that no matter what happened in her life, that she would do what God had called her to do. My dad did the same thing to mom. She went to the hospital. She never made it out. The next day, she gave, the Lord took her to heaven. My point to all of that is, had I not had the mind of Christ, I would have lost my mind. See, the mind of Christ is not just for your relationships or your finances, but ultimately, the mind of Christ gives you peace. So I want to pray over you guys. My goal was, was to become and be very transparent, give you examples, give you stories, challenge you, say the things that you don't want to hear. Amen? But that most people are afraid to hear, don't want to speak. I'm not afraid if you talk about me, I serve God. The Bible says that if you come against me, God will get you. That's the mindset we need. You better watch your mouth when you talk about God's children. Amen? 
So, Father, we thank you, God. We thank you for the mind to serve you. We thank you for everything that you've done today, Father. We ask, God, that your people would walk in victory, Father, that they not have a mind of being a victim, God, but that they walk in a mindset of being in victory, Father. God, we love you. We thank you for everything that you've done, Father. We thank you for grace and mercy, Father. We ask, God, that we do not conform, but that we transform to everything that you have called us to do, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How many of you guys received that message from Pastor Vinny this morning? Amen. Let's give the Lord some praise. I really want to encourage everyone to, if you didn't take notes, to please go back and watch online. This is such good, amazing wisdom that Pastor Vinny shared with us. And I think it's important for us to maintain that focus on the power of our mind. And so, um, like Pastor Vinny shared, Pastor Juan will be back tomorrow evening. So if you call this place home, if you want to call Get Rap Church your home, if you're involved or you want to get involved, it doesn't matter. I believe the greatest gift that we can give to honor our pastors is by showing up tomorrow night and honoring the word that he has for us, the revealing of a special place plan that God has placed on Get Wrapped Church. So I want to invite all of you guys back tomorrow night. We're going to have food. Don't worry. And so we want to invite all of you guys. And just to get you guys a little sneak peek of what's ahead, some of you have already heard about the Purple Book. The Purple Book is something that we will be starting. As you guys know, we're going into the Firm Foundation, the next sermon series. And so the entire church is going to be going through this book. This is a tool that's going to help us go back to our fundamentals in our relationship with Christ. And so it's available right now. We're going to be going through it as a church. So your team leads are going to be going through it. They're going to be challenging you. Pastor is going to be speaking about it from the pulpit. So there's a few of them out there already available to purchase. You'll hear more about it tomorrow evening. Um, but I want to encourage you guys to hurry and get your hands on it today while they're here. And we'll have some more available next week. And don't forget to stop by the tents, meet all of our pastors, meet and greet the new hangout hosts and get involved. And so so I'm going to pray and bless the tithes and offering. You remember, you can give through the online app or you can drop an envelope at the doors. So um, we want to pray over those and then dismiss. Father, we thank you so much for today, God. We thank you for this incredible word that you've brought forth this morning, God. We thank you for every single family and individual represented here, Lord. I know that you have already started a work in each and every single mind, Father. And so I ask that you continue the work. You open the hearts of those who receive the word this morning. And right now we pray for the tithes and the offering, Father God. We know that the enemy tries to come and battle us in our finances. And we know that um, we can never steal from you. So I pray for all of those that are returning the tithes and giving above and beyond. Father, we thank you that you're going to continue to bless them for being good stewards of your finances. So we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. And everyone says amen. You guys are dismissed. Have a wonderful Sunday.